Alrighty, so this is our sodium cyanide. Now, where's the uh, where's the molar mass? Well, half a pound. That's not the molar mass. There it is. There it says F W. That stands for formula weight. That's the old way of doing it. So it's forty nine point oh two. Alrighty. Don't worry. We never use those chemicals. They're triple locked away and hidden from curious eyes. Okay. Once the IB asked, what's the definition of molar mass? And the answer was the mass of one mole. Now that isn't very helpful. It's like asking, what's the definition of the economy of bananas? It's the banana economy. It makes no sense. But let's have a little think. The molar mass for, say, chicken eggs is 3.01 times 10 to the 25 grams per mole. So, so let's expand that. So what does that mean? Well, that means that if I have one mole of chicken eggs, then the mass is going to be 3.01 times 10 to the 25 grams. What's a mole? Well, a mole, it's just a number. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23. It's just a number. Just like a dozen is a number, 12, or two is a pair. It's just a number. Now, that mass, make it a bit more coherent, it's about half the mass of the moon. So let's back up a bit. An egg is 50 grams, so if I have a dozen eggs, that's going to be 600 grams, and that's 12 eggs. If I have a pair of eggs, that's going to be 100 grams, and that's two eggs. Now, I know you can do these simple calculations, but mole, it's a big number, but it's the same process. Now I'm hungry. So let's define the molar mass. Well, at least let me give you the units. It's the mass in grams of a mole of a substance. And don't forget, a mole is just 6 times 10 to the 23... Well, what word are we going to put there? Things? Particles? Units? No one's quite sure. Uh, but I can tell you the definition of a substance, according to the IB. That could be uh, atoms, molecules, ions, electrons, or even formerly units. So atoms, well, those are on the periodic table, aren't they? Molecules more than one atom. Sodium ions could be ions and formerly units, well that would be for example sodium chloride or lithium oxide. So that, that being a unit, just one sodium ion and chloride ion together, that makes a formerly unit. He is everywhere in the universe, he is abundant, he is noble. Of course I'm talking about uh, helium. From the periodic table you can see that it has a 2, which is the atomic number, and 4 well, that is essentially the molar mass, the mass of one mole in grams. And that's denoted by big M in this syllabus, big M. And so if I have four grams of helium, I've got one mole. That's what it means. Four grams of helium is one mole. And one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of helium. This is a curtailed periodic table, I've uh, cut the middle bit out to make everything fit and, and, and to be clear. So let's look at the sodium cyanide, NaCn. How would you work out the molar mass? Well, first of all, you have to find the three elements. And using the larger number, which in this periodic table is the lower number in the box, that's the molar mass of those elements. Add them all up, and it comes out at 49.01 grams per mole. If I have a mole of sodium cyanide, that's the mass. This is diethylamine. It smells terrible. It smells like rotting uh, fish, rotting meat. So uh, your body's programmed to not like that smell, of course, because if you, if you did like that smell and you ate rotting food, it, it would be in terrible trouble. Right, there's the formula. So let's work out the molar mass. See if we agree. 73.14. All right, this one's a little more complicated. It has parentheses there. So that too means that what comes before it in the parentheses has to be doubled. So I'll expand it, write it out in full, and then it's the same procedure. Find the elements on the periodic table. 11 hydrogens and that one nitrogen plus the carbons from before. And that gives me a molar mass of 73.14 grams per mole. You've got to have those units or it's wrong. So this chemical is a little more difficult to work out the molar mass. It's at the side though. So there it is. Now notice there's a dot there 
dot seven H two O. That means there's seven water molecules attached to every sodium arsenate molecule. So you have to account for that in the molar mass. It says NW, that's a molecular weight here. That's the old way of doing it, non-IB. Okay, another sophistication is this kind of dot that shows there's a physical bond, not necessarily a chemical bond, within the molecule. Alrighty, so how do we deal with that? You know what, you just, just deal with it. Just add on those seven waters at the end. So I'm looking up the molar masses from the periodic table, summing them all together. Yep. Now, you might notice that the numbers that I get are slightly different to the ones on the bottle. That's because the periodic table has been uh, revised since the 60s when we bought these chemicals. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this, but I think it's benzasol. Benzasol, I think, is a generous pronunciation. And so if you're presented with a structure like this, just add everything up as before. Don't be intimidated. Fucalite is a mineral found in Japan. That's the molar mass. Don't forget, big M is molar mass. So what's the X? It's a halogen. Pause the video and work it out. If you can do this, you can do any question on molar mass. X is fluorine. I repeat, X is fluorine. 